what's up everybody big hurt 916 you know how i get down over here i'm on that positivity that motivation and i never settle for average go to big 916.com hit that like button hit that subscribe button represent and uh man we about to get into some real talk right here i'm here with my man shane from tucson arizona you know i do big things over on fresh out with interviews but i had to bring this man on my platform so he can share some positivity and some motivation for you guys out there who are lacking in those departments and also on some black, black and brown politics. Dude, there's so much we were talking about off camera. We were laughing, man, me, you, and your brother talking about some stuff, man. Um, share with the people a little bit about your mindset, man, and how you were able to kind of transform yourself into this, this, this positive life force and change your your mentality, man, because a lot of people get stuck in this mentality and they don't realize that, you know, prison is one thing physically, but your mind is also in prison. Right, yeah. Um, so like pretty much all that adversity, that darkness kind of beat it out of me. Like, but we just felt so much oppression and so much, um, you know, the bad things, you, you, the things that we would call bad in life and just obstacle after obstacle is that, there's kind of no other option. Like how many times can you hit a wall? Like how many yeah. times, how dark, what can get darker than absolute pitch black? Like it can, it can't get no darker. So I feel like all those situations kind of squeezed it out of me. So I was pressed so much in life that I was forced to be a light. I was forced to change. My mind was just bent and it got, you know, stretched to its limits that I was kind of like, well, how, how do I bounce back from this? How, how can I become something good? Because if I continued with that same thinking, then I would just get lost in the shuffle. If I'm dark in dark, then mm. I'm just I'm just lost in the shuffle. I'm just part of the crowd. I got lost in the shuffle. I'm washed up, you know, as you know, that term you say, like, yeah, you yeah, just, yeah. You, you's a nobody, you know? So the only way to stand out is to be the opposite of what you were so you can okay there's a, there's something great that i remember hearing and i think it was in a book and uh it was about psychology and they were saying that they used the slaves for example and they said once you've been a slave and you get free you can never go back to a normal way of life you just can't mm. like psychologically it would eat you up you couldn't just kick your feet up and relax and be like, oh, I made it. it you're you're, you're, you're um, connected for life. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you'll never feel right and it'll eat you the rest of your life if you don't go back and free the other slaves. Oh, like you man. could just never yeah. continue thinking, oh, I'm free, I'm good. And just forget about everybody else. And just yeah. forget of yeah. what you went through. It's like there's a term for it, but it's a real thing in the mind that, 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 you you just you can never be happy like attaining that freedom like oh I'm good and if you are can be happy you're a cold piece you're a cold yeah, you're a, cold you just identify yeah. with people that suffered as you that suffering connected us you know what I mean that that's why there's so many brotherhoods that's why the military got it gangs got it yeah. all these because there's something in suffering that connect us and yeah and how do you how do you think going forward we can work past that? a lot of the political divide between the black and brown, man, because we have a lot of the same struggles, man. It's just like, if we came together, like we were talking about off camera, imagine us pulling up 10 deep, Lolo's, Benz's, exotic cars in the Malibu, or, you know, uh, Newport Beach, or pulling up in the Hamptons, bro, they mm -hmm. shit themselves, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. how, can we, how can we move forward like that as cul two cultures to elevate ourselves, you think? A messiah, honestly. I feel like those politics are so deep-rooted that they're so ingrained in the brain, it's like DNA. It's gonna take a special certain type of people to break free and bridge that gap because it's really not bridged. So if there is, you know, every section or genre or group of people has their messiah and there's gonna be somebody great that because you can't follow a path that you've never seen. Mm. So there has to be a certain type of somebody that all these decision makings to bridge this gap is brand new to him. 
He's never seen this. It's not been done. This is so, this goes generations and generations behind us that it's like, there's no crack in that code. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's going to take like someone like you, someone like me, yeah. some somebody to actually put it in the physical and see it to start questioning like, oh, there is progress in this. Yeah. There is benefits yeah. to this. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of like the next step, if you will. You know what I mean? Because those 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 politics run deep, bro. No, like, I, yeah. you know, it, it makes it, it makes sense what you're saying, because, you know, whenever I see like, you know, I look at a lot of hip hop stuff and then hip hop. No, people can kind of like say, oh, it's just entertainment, but hip hop is powerful more. They use that for a lot of different narratives. Mm -hmm. And I notice how sometimes they'll use like black or, and they put like a Hispanic that, oh, he won't sign this and that, or they create this, not even real tension, just create an unnecessary like divide. Like, why do you even saying that to make it seem like these guys mm -hmm. don't get along when it's all bullshit? Negativity sells. Yeah. Yeah, negativity sells. Yeah. And no and people when they hear positive shit to them it's corny. Like uh I had a conversation with one of my boys and he goes, The the word love, and look, it's corny. And you think love, you think soft. You don't really think strength and vicious, but love is sacrifice. Love is deep, love is strong. That's the most strongest thing you can experience in your life. But it's just because it's been misrepresented, negativity sells. We just like you know, like I told you earlier. A lot of my homies are prone to violence. So that's the only thing we gravitate to. It's like a high for them. Like, you know, some people like getting money, driving nice cars. Some of my homies, they don't even care about none of that shit. They just want to, you know, catch a hot one. Like, mm. they just, they love that. It does something for them. So to hear somebody speak like that is just foreign. They're not used to seeing it. We're not used to hearing it. But it has to be represented in a way that they can identify with, that they can be like, Oh, that shit's real. Like I, I, I identify with that love. Like, like seeing positive stuff coming from somebody like us might catch attention. It might catch a movement, and you might start saluting it and saying, you know what? There is another side to life that we're neglecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that 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 road hasn't even been traveled yet. Man. Yeah, you know, it's just like we were talking. At, um, and I was telling you about like in the pen how I used to see cats and like Big Herc, man, you cool, but my homies, I can't really message you in here, but you know, give me your number, mm -hmm. man, I'll hit you up when I get out. And you know, some of the conversations were deep. I had some conversations with my old boy. He tell me stuff. I'm like, man, you know, we're not we're not that much different, man. It's just mm -hmm. different, you know, different different parts of different cities and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of the same things in common. We still deal with a lot of the same struggles. And how you explain something. Just talking with you, it makes me think about some things I was going through. I'm like, damn, you know, it helps maybe me make more sense of my life, which can help me grow. Mm -hmm. So we're growing together. Right. And the more we do that, the more we realize there's really not a divide. And we can dude, we can, we can put together who knows what. You know, you're over here doing your thing. I'm doing my thing. I'm like, dude, you know what? My boy got a a, a a gallery over here. Why don't you come over there for a week and do a pop-up or mm -hmm. let's do this over here. I mean, there's so many cross networking and, 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 and different things we can do and we can all eat off of that but we have to be able to, to at least have the conversation to start this movement and I think this is like the beginning man that's why I was like when you hit me up and give an opportunity I'm like man it'd be cool to have some dialogue and just and just talk about different things because everything starts with a conversation you know how many times you've been in the pen and you see things man the conversation get misconstrued and somebody gets stabbed Right, over yeah. something stupid, mm -hmm. you know? So having a conversation and you start thinking, well, damn, man, you know, I'm into this, you're into that. Oh, I got a plug on wheels. Oh, man, my boy got a, he got a car shop. Now, now we doing business. You, you know, we, we, we networking, man. And I think like our network, once we open it up and realize that it's bigger than just our immediate surroundings, more opportunities that come about, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's, that's what this is all about. And, um, you know, when I talk about, like I said, the positive and, and, and the motivation, you know, I'm, I'm trying to inspire kids to think and young men to be men. You know, I grew up like it was all right to cap on somebody or to catch a fade and shake hands afterwards. It's like I'm not saying you have to beat people up to be a man, but these young men, they need men to help them become men because it's been all, it's, it's getting so misconstrued. Like a lot of these youngsters don't know how to be men anymore. Yeah. 
you know yeah they lost their way they lost their identity they never they don't know they don't they ne and they have nobody to show they have they don't have anybody that that that'll grab their attention and be like oh i you know that's that's it's like a a version of me or an older version of me and the way you articulate yourself bro and the conversation it it throws people off because they wouldn't expect it yeah you know just like me they're just like oh you talk so proper <laughs> where are you from mm -hmm. you know i had somebody when i was in the gym one time and lady said oh are you from she named some village in Africa. I said, what the hell? <laughs> she, was talking, she was like, are you from like the so-and-so village in, in well, yes, Cameroon? She said, Cameroon? <laughs> I said, Cameroon? Mm -hmm. Well, let me see. I don't speak French, but I can be. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy, man. How people, they, be like, they have no idea. Yeah, yeah. And then I get other people, oh, man, are you you military? You ex, you know, mm -hmm. you a cop, this and that? I said, no, I'm part of the thing from yeah, that. Yeah. So it's crazy, man. So I, I think it's, it's almost funny. And that's why I said, man, I could only imagine us pulling up somewhere and going to Roof Chris and everybody like, man, what the yeah. hell? These dudes, man, you know? Because it's like it blows people's mind, but that's what I want to do. I want to blow people's mind, oh, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, 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 I want, you know, people like ourselves and not to try to put anything on, but to elevate ourselves and to let the world be our playground. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we have been trapped not only in a physical prison in a sense where they put us up in there to throw away the key on some bullshit, but mentally, and you know, hearing you with your stories, you broke that, bro. You broke the code. Mm -hmm. That's like they like, damn, where where's that glitch at? Pass that shit yeah. up. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. how you figure that shit out? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, God damn, rewind that. Okay, what do he say? He said that he did this and that, mm -hmm. dude. Because it's like that's the only thing that separates because. You weren't given a silver spoon, bro. You weren't given a trust fund. You weren't given uh, 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 nepotism, mm -hmm. and you made it. And and one of the the thing reason why I speak like this is because, like for instance, to give you an example, I used to have a hard time communicating. My vocabulary was fuck. I like that, I don't give a fuck. Fuck. That's all I knew. I just would talk like so. I didn't have. I didn't know how to express myself. And I couldn't get out what I really wanted to say. So once I started kind of like reading books, I read them so I can yeah. learn how to say what I want to say to you without saying, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. like you know, uh, shit. Uh, you know what I mean? Like something outside of how do I express this? No, I totally, man, I used to be embarrassed because I used to have to go to speech because I had a list. Mm -hmm. Real bad. Certain words, I like, I couldn't get them out. So I had this little class and I would go there. Like, oh, I got this little class. I would spin off. And homie's like, where, where are you going? Uh, you know, I got to go do something. And I had a speech <laughs> class that helped me with my list, man. And, uh, you know, people are like, oh, you sound Mike Tyson. They talk all that mm -hmm. shit. But, you know, as you – and going to the – and coming out, I became more confident in my conversation. Right. And it, it led to where I am today. So, you know, that's powerful, man, being able to change that to use it to benefit you because, you know, you talk about the Messiah, man. You're, you're a Messiah now. You, you, you're, you're showing – people a side that they didn't know existed and like i said it goes right back to you know we could say tran day my nigga you made it <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like a gauntlet yeah. they set this shit up at the gauntlet mm -hmm. bro there's they got the the flaming arrows they got the poison dart shooting out the wall they got fl the, the the floor opens up and there's a fucking fire pit I, I, it's crazy you say that because i used to explain it like that too that's exactly like just like that like man this is a hell of a journey man this is crazy it's, it's like crazy, it's like yeah. a movie it's like a movie yeah, like and a then movie. you make it and then it da -da, ah, yeah. the gold yeah. and shit you get the gold and yeah, shit that's why it feels so damn good like that's why people like us appreciate you know the rewards yeah, yeah because yeah. like yeah. like they were well earned like man you bled for that like you cried and was on your knees and just Times you was just like the the pain you experienced to finally get some type of breakthrough is like how do I recreate that feeling? You can't buy that no, feeling. Exactly. You can never recreate that. Like you said, yeah, bro, you like, man, make you show. you see something beautiful like that, you make you want to cry. Like, damn, I went from seeing bars and bricks and blood and just all this and to seeing something that like wow, like man, that gives me a feeling on the inside that like I couldn't even know how to describe it to yeah. somebody. That's like. I wish you can all experience this for yourself. You know what I mean? No, you're exactly right. I mean, um, when I go to LA and sometimes I go down peace and I'll pull over and I just look at the ocean, I just trip out like, and just think, man. And just like, cause I used to look at the, 
the yard and see the guard driving around there and be thinking like, man, I wish I was in that truck. I wish I was out there. Yeah. You know just, I mean? just a hundred yeah. feet. Oh, Give me a hundred feet. <laughs> Get out of here. here. Yeah. You know, I wish I was on the other side of the fence. I mean, for real, right? Tra- like like how lucky that cloud is. Man. That cloud's free right yeah. now. Yeah. Or try to see if I can see an animal way out there running. <laughs> like, man, you're free, homie. <laughs> you're out there. What's it like? Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's a blessing, man, to be able to, you know, have these conversations with somebody who's shared the experience and you see the, the bigger picture, man. And, um, you know, I definitely want to have you back on sharing motivation stuff because, uh, dude, you're going to you're going you're gonna to save a lot of lives and opening a lot of minds to new opportunities that they didn't know existed. And, you know, one thing I want to also touch on is, you know, kids ask me sometimes, like, Big Perk, how do you come up with hobbies? How do you? You know, how do you find things that you like? And um, maybe you can elaborate on that because a lot of kids they don't know they don't know what they like because they're not they're not like they're not doing anything outside of maybe sitting in front of the computer. Mm-hmm. Like how how would they like find what they're into? Yeah, or something? like a passion. You know, like yeah. like I was always in the cars, like you know, or working on tinkering on stuff, yeah, or building yeah. models. But a lot of kids now they don't do that stuff anymore. Man. Mm-hmm. You know, they're too yeah, much caught yeah. up in the video games or Pornhub. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, for sure. Like, um, I mean, my like me tattooing. Yeah, that yeah. I found that on the inside in prison, and uh, it kind of saved me. It really yeah. did. It saved me because it gave me something to give my attention to that I can give it, and it would give back eventually. Okay. It didn't give back at the yeah, time, yeah, yeah. but uh, when I drew in prison, it freed me. Yeah, like yeah. I was in a That's state expression. of mind. Yeah, I was in a state of mind that I was free from my suffering, and and it, and I was able to give all my energy and uh, dedicate some time, and it actually gave back to me because I saw growth. So I mean, it's it's like you just kind of have to find whatever it is because you can monotonize off of anything these yeah, days. Yeah. So you know whatever you're into, even fitness, you know fitness, um, you know if you, you know whatever you're into, art, pain, art, drawing, drawing, whatever you're doing, cars. Yeah, yeah. It's endless, you know. You just gotta have that passion, and that like, like um, I, I always had a, a passion for people. Mm-hmm. I, I love people. I'm a people person, like crazy. I've always like, even when I go out, I'm a people watcher, man. I just enjoy seeing people living, and, and um, I, I, I had these. I, I felt something like I connect with people that suffer, but I, I didn't know that there was that was a that could become a passion. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like even something like that. Like, you don't realize, like, damn, you can motivate people. You can, you know, you can somehow help people by just because of that quality. So it's kind of like you just, anything you put your your energy to, it's going to give back, that's even right, if it's right. bad. That's right. You know what I'm you're saying? Right, you're right. But you're yeah, right. it's going to give back bad. Yes. You know what I mean? It's going to give back negative consequences. And you just got to find something that you can give your all to it. And you know it'll give back. Like, it's not a waste of time. Like, you could dedicate 10 years to this. And you know, like, every single minute, second I put into this, like, was worth it. It was worth it. So, um, you know, it's just we can't give our energy to things that don't give us back anything. You know what I mean? Like, even kind of like the dope game. Like, you give your all to that. And you have it, but then in the end, it, like, crumbles. Like, it doesn't give back to you. You, That's something you can't. It just takes. So, it's like, you just got to find something that, that, that. You know, speaks to you. You know, it can be you know animals. You know, what if you like yeah. you know breeding dogs, or you just have a passion for animals, or a passion for people, or a passion to build, or like it's it, the possibilities are endless. I think it's just up to the leaders to kind of bring that out of them and kind of say, you know, okay, th- this is where I see you know you you got a strong area in this, and somehow kind of uh you know like uh bring that out of him that he don't see that's right. like he might not see that he's a leader yeah and it's like it's our job to be like you know kind of hone in on those recognize strengths that yeah potential. and then bring that out and put that's him right. in situations where he's able to recognize that hey you got this inside of you or this is i see your growth right here and kind of like you know point him in the right direction because nobody did that for us no, you know what i mean no. nobody did that for us honestly they praised yeah. us yeah for being violent they, they, you know, and that felt good to us. Yeah. Like when we were violent in prison, like that was, a, they would pat us on the back. Like you see people show you love off of that. Like, hell yeah. So to us, we're thinking like, oh, I did good. I did good. I matched on that food there. Like, so to us, we thought we were doing good. And we realized like, I mean, it took us being older to realize yeah. like, damn, we just needed that affirmation. You know what well, I mean? Well, like you said, that same energy you put into all that, the dope game, you know, being a prison savage, you put that into something positive and the reward the tenfold dude 
you 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 have success building your dreams. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's just flipping the energy. Just yeah. flipping the energy. Yeah. So it's just instead of going over here in the dark, you go over to the light and you get to and you get rewarded ten times that. But that's the thing like I realized like, you know, like you said, what you put your energy into and what you get back from that is just what it's just how you perceive it. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. people are putting just as much energy, like you said, as being up in there, just, you know, basically a certain violence on people, mm. you know? Well, even violence, even that could be, uh, uh, give back to you, you know? You could get into the sports industry, you see what I'm saying? You could be a boxer, UFC. Right. So it's like, even <laughs> yeah, being violent could <laughs> kind of pay off, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> But just put it into something. The that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the octagon with that shit. Uh, tell the people where they can find your social media, man. Uh, man, you can find me on Instagram. My name is um, Shane, but on my Instagram, it's my last name first. So it's Estelori Shane, and um, it's uh, Shane Portrait Tattoo. So you'll see a lot of tattoos on there, but you'll also see me getting into uh, motivating and self-development and leadership and just kind of showing you a different side of life and how I got into, you know, the, the, uh, the skills that I have today, you know? So I just... I want them to get more in depth and I want to be transparent and I want people to see me for me and kind of know my story and maybe maybe my story can help you somehow, you know. So that's right. it. Hey man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank yes, you, sir. brother. Hey, you know how we do it over here. Positivity, motivation, never settle for average. Big Hurt 916, my man Shane. Hello, my name is Big Kirk 916 and I'm with the Wash Your Ass Committee and I'm traveling across America helping people wash their ass and get their booty holes clean. And I have with me here today, Wash Your Ass Soap. And this one in particular is Butt Naked Scrub, but I also have Festival, Oatmeal Milk and Honey, Jamaican Me Crazy, um, Monkey Farts, and all these scents smell very good, they will help cleanse your body of funk and also make you feel better about yourself so if you can go to bigkirk916.com you can pick you up a bar and my goal is to help america combat funk go to the herc store at bigkirk916.com and pick you up a bar of soap so you can wash that ass or pick you up some never settle for average merch or some of the muscle up car lifestyle merch we have hats, never settle for average. Got the muscle up t-shirts. We also have the never settle for average tank tops. Got the muscle up car lifestyle hoodies. Got the beanie caps. Hey man, represent. And I know you guys aren't average, so pick you up some swag, and step your game up. Hello, I'm Big Herc 916 Contact me for life coaching and motivational speaking. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.